The brain processes nearly 10,000 visual and oral cues per minute. As first impressions stick, make the customer see your business in the right way. Funky Vibes can ensure your vibes attract the right tribe with their marketing expertise, graphic design, bespoke websites, and social media packages. For more information or a no-commitment initial consultation, simply email your tribe at funkyvibe.co.uk. You're listening to Go Fish, exclusively on the Pod Station. Welcome everyone to episode 61 of the Go Fish Marketing. Oh, business tips podcast. Oh, pa there. Yes. I'm not going to edit that out. Oh, that's me. <laughs> you were boasting in the last episode that you were getting really good at the intros. My name is Mark from Funky Vibes Marketing, <laughs> and nobody likes her. That's Ishtar Ali from Ancora Interiors. I think we should start it. <laughs> No, no let's people go. like to listen to faux pas, um, and the the sensible tones of Chris Brockford from my marketing guy you could hear there. Hi, Chris. Uh, yeah, good today, thanks, Mark. It's another lovely day, just like the last time. It is. <laughs> Issues making me keep that fumble in on the basis that I boasted so much after the last show about how amazing I was at keeping us on time and on point. Mm-hmm. I Good guess point. you put yourself up on that pedestal. Mm-hmm. People are ready down. to knock you down. <laughs> exactly. If you want to listen to that amazing episode that I managed to manage our way through, uh, which was episode 60, 60. Uh, which is all about uh, inflation and the cost of living from a business perspective, then go and check us out on all of the major podcast platforms. That's Google, Spotify, Amazon, Apple. Uh, if you want easy links to those, then just go visit our website, which is gofishpodcast.com. There's quick and easy links on there, and you can find all the other 59 episodes just sitting there ready to be perused at your leisure. If you want to send us an email, it's gofish at thepodstation.co.uk, and you can check us out on social media. We're on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. It's at Goldfish Podcast. And why would you do that, I hear you ask? Well, we do a business spotlight for all of our followers. So businesses have an opportunity to promote their business. Over uh, what, what sort of a period is it? How long do they get? Uh, I think it's a week that we have, well... Basically. A week? That's a long conversation. I thought it was 10 minutes. Yeah, I thought it was around about that. <laughs> my bad, let me rephrase. That you was one hell five... of an interview you just carried out. I'm not editing she that just, one, by the talk way. talk a lot, yeah. then, she? It's a five-minute Zoom conversation, but we'll put your logo and stuff up there and try and keep promoting you for a, a period of time during that week. Yeah, so it's just a bit of free promo. So you can direct message us or send us an email if you want to put your business forward. And there's no geographical or... Limitation. Uh, limitations. No. You can be wherever you are in the world doing whatever it is you want yes i suppose within legal reason <laughs> don't be contacted well, yeah yeah <laughs> we, we might filter some of the more yeah. extreme options <laughs> chris is shaking his head ish i know oh. not for the first time <laughs> i feel we've slipped right back in there uh, yes so that's all the stuff uh, what are we covering this week as a topic we're covering business plans because we're coming right off the heels of the last discussion that we have as you said which was based on in inflation and economy and we figured that actually reviewing business plans might be a good topic given that it makes logical sense i would say a business plan i hear you say are, are people listening to this and going a business what what won't amaze you i'm sure or it might amaze some people but some companies just start their businesses with no thought to a business plan whatsoever. Now, the business plan should be should be a, a signpost uh, as to how you get to where you want to go. Ishtar, what what elements would you put into a business plan? What do we Bloody need to look at? Bloody hell, it'd be like war and peace. <laughs> Bloody hell, my, my, my business plan when I started my business was war and peace. I know we've talked about that before. It was like 50 pages. Of, That's why I asked. I know. And I haven't looked at it since. Um, having said that, um, I am reviewing a business plan at the minute in line with what we've been talking about. And it is a useful subject because we are 
honing down our ideal customers in a little bit more detail as, as a result of that. So it is a useful topic. What is included in a business plan? You might need to help me out, but generally I feel like it's something related to demographic, um, it's related to marketing, it's related to finance, it's related to competitor analysis. Um, Shall I read out some of the different sections that yeah, I've had in mind? Yeah, because off the top of my head, I'm like, mm, yeah. Because I think my business plan for Vantage uh, was way over 50 pages, I oh, have to say. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I know, I know, I bored I'm myself. I'm surprised by that, to be honest, because... Yeah, uh, once I start doing something, though, I have to do it, like, absolutely. That is so you. Yeah. Which is very much me. Um, right. So, uh, But a lot of the business plan people, I know... People might not have written down business plans, but I think people would be surprised that they've probably got it in the head, but it really does help Helped to have it paper. written yeah, down. Um, it not least because quite often when you write ramblings down, you can better structure and organise them. Uh, whereas if it's just things swirling around in the abyss, this is your brain. Quite often, I think it can become jumbled and less focused. So It's a discipline, isn't it? It's 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 charting your goals, your objectives, and, and the way in which you reach those goals and objectives. Exactly. So uh, executive summary was the first one, which is basically an overview of your plan. Mm. Um, you've got... And am I right in saying, <clears throat> from memory this is, so <laughs> it might not be, um, you write the executive summary after you've written the business plan. Yes, you? you do. Yeah. I remember that from uni. That and was why, why do we do that? Well, it's an overview. How do you write an overview of something that doesn't yet exist? Exactly. Oh, I got that right. Very well clever. done, mate. Woo! <laughs> uh, we've got company description, which obviously explains who you are, what you do, what you stand for. Uh, we've we've covered this before about what your company motto. What was it? Not um, your um, um, mission statement. Got it. What your mission statement is, and uh, again, mission statements are something that are quite actually. Off. I know people shake their so heads and they think, hard. but mission statements are actually a really good way of properly nailing down yeah. who you are and what you do. And we've read some out on previous episodes yeah, from so. Amazon and Google. And it's quite amazing just exactly how on point they are to the business that they then sort of pursue. Yeah, it is mm. useful. Uh, we've got market analysis. Mm -hmm. Huge. What, what are your competitors doing and, and your why? And your demographic and your client, yeah. Customer Who are your clients? Base. Where are they up to in their life? Can they afford to buy your product? Is your product a luxury? Uh, when their bills have just gone through the roof, or is your product a necessity and desperately needed? Price point. Price point. So that's that. Probably, I suppose that come under the service and product lines. So what services do you offer, and how much do they cost? Mm. Yeah. Do they need to go up? I mean, if you're, we were talking about in the last episode, if your your raw materials have gone up through the roof, you're surely going to have to pass that on to the customers. Yeah. Or are you making so much wonga that you can absorb it? I'd love to meet someone who can. Marketing and sales. Mm -hmm. uh, organization and management. So presumably a review of your team, yep. their expertise, how they're utilized. Yeah. Um, what else? We've got funding mm -hmm. and finance. So do you need funding? Do you have existing funding? What are you paying for that? Can it be better structured? Mm -hmm. Is it needed? Mm-hmm whether it be to help consolidate debts or whether it be to invest in expanding. Going back to my chum in the water from my previous episode, I was very <laughs> pleased with that. You know, is this an opportunity to capitalise on the weaknesses of your competitors? Mm -hmm. uh, financial projections, good old spreadsheets. You love a spreadsheet-ish. Yeah, I love a spreadsheet. Uh, and I would probably also put in there sort of risk and compliance as well. So if you're a regulated business... Yeah. Um, looking at what criteria, what what obligations you have, so it might be you properly registered with all of the regulatory bodies. Mm. Um, do you have sort of what's the word I'm looking for? Plan B's in place, backup plans. Yeah. So, is there insurances? Insurances as well. I was going like to key say. man insurance. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have funding options available business to continuity is the business continuity yeah continuity like data yeah it infrastructure do you have backups yeah. off site things there's like a, there's that there's your legal obligations as well mm. like registering with the uh, um with the ceo mm. um such as gdpr and mm. uh, and the like feasibility you know how feasible 
is your business. Is, you yes, might finish exactly. it and realise, Christ, I'm never going to be able to yeah. earn a living. Well, people have done that, and what do you what do you want out of it? Are you going to are you going to earn enough in the business to actually earn a living? So there's a there's a there's a heck of a lot heck of a lot to go through. And is this something that you can do yourself? I mean, I've, I suppose the answer is yes, of course it is. But should people be looking at potentially? bringing in experts who can help with this? And if so, what sort of people could assist with this? With, with the exception of an accountant, I think you've got to do it yourself. Um, but you might want an accountant to run through the figures that you've, that you've created. But you've got to, it's got to come from you in the first place. I suppose if you've got a marketing department or a, you use a marketing company, you can get them to do the market analysis. Well, if you've got friends that are good in those areas, because not everybody that starts a business can do this no. level of, of a no. plan. So utilise the people that are around you and, and you know, go from there. There are also um, help centres for, for small businesses like um, Blue Orchid that, um, uh, uh, that <clears throat> I, once, I once went through. Um, the place in Manchester, one Manchester. There's People Plus. Yeah, there are, people there are plus, yeah. all these all these groups that uh, that will provide help to to small companies within their areas. And it is useful, by the way, because oh, this is obviously the topic. Is is it a good time to kind of relook at it at this point? I mean, yes, I do think that if you've done a business plan and you haven't looked at it for a long time, then it is something that you need to look at specifically now, but you should periodically look at it anyway, I think. How long is a good long time, though? More than a year. Yeah. I would say you should be looking at it annually. Uh, well, we, we discussed this in the last episode about reviewing your sort of forecasts. But your business Almost plan. quarterly. D- does the business plan not fall into that to a degree? I mean, you might not be rewriting it every quarter, but surely you should be touching bases on it, given how tumultuous the environment is at the moment. Because there's a lot of different factors that are affecting different industries at the moment. So the property market at the moment's gone absolutely mental, mm. um, which is great for those people who sell properties and those people who might work on them, whether it be trades or surveyors. Um, financial advisors and the like but there are other um, elements that perhaps more the service industry that perhaps are still suffering because disposable income's definitely been reduced should they not be looking at their plans a bit more frequently than once a year not the whole business plan i don't think mark uh, I, certainly revising um, sales goals and, and and the like and Having a look at your costs on a on a regular basis, but it would be onerous to to do Ishtar's fifty two page marketing plan on a <laughs> uh, on a you know every couple of months, wouldn't it? You wouldn't do anything other than marketing plans. Oh my God, I just the fact that it was that big a document just scares me into ever reading it again. So it'd have to be a condensed version if I was ever going to do a new one. I think I'd bullet point it if I was going to revisit the one I did. Yes. I I, th- I I would stress to people that you shouldn't have in your head that you've got to write a war and peace document because yeah. that could be very much a, an over-facing task that people get a mental block on. Yeah. Yeah. It, it only has to be as long as it is useful for you. And actually bullet points is probably a way I would do it more going forward rather than perhaps writing complete sentences and bullet point what it is I want to include in there. I'm partial to a spider diagram. Oh, well... <laughs> I'm a visual, that's why I'm creative. So anything where you can just draw pretty pictures and bubble diagrams and stuff like that, just a sanity check, I'd just have a load of them in there. Yeah. With a good spreadsheet, of course. Of course. Content we've covered, length we've covered. Obviously, I think we've quite in-depth covered um, why it's a good thing to do to step back and reassess. I mean, what happens if when you do this exercise, and I suppose some people might not be doing it, for this exact purpose that they won't like the answer that they get i bet that happens more often than not to be honest it's a scary thing when you're reviewing your your plans it's scary when you're reviewing your financial plans and you're setting targets and then you realize that you're either on target or you're massively off but it's also a scary thought that to think that your customers might have changed i think at that stage when, when the self-doubt creeps in because it will you do need to have a good chat with 
either a, a, a networking colleague or a good friend who's in, but somebody who's in business and understands, run it past them and yeah. say, look, can you see the weaknesses in this? I think my doubts are, and they'll either reassure you or shatter your dreams. Or give you some new ideas that you might not have done it. I mean, well, exactly. Me and Mark and I have been talking to loads of friends recently about opportunities in this period, haven't we? And just trying to coach each other and just generate new new thoughts and stuff and that's been massively valuable this is where the business mentor from some somewhere like people plus one manchester blue orchid those, those sorts of organizations are absolutely gold dust really um because they've <clears throat> they are completely independent you're not paying them they're not a friend who might think well he wants me to say this so i'll say this they are completely independent and they want you to succeed. The interior design of a space can significantly affect your feelings and well-being. Ancora Interiors can help create an environment which reflects the message of your business or design a living space which is a reflection of you, your lifestyle and tastes. Providing both e-design and fully-fledged interior design services to suit every budget. And Cora ensure that the look you want becomes a reality using a range of digital visualization tools to perfect the look of your space before a paintbrush is lifted. Check out AncoraInteriors.com for more information or contact us at hello at AncoraInteriors.com for a free consultation. With 22 million UK users, LinkedIn offers a fabulous opportunity to find your ideal clients and to stay ahead of your competition. But what do these future clients currently find when they visit your profile? First impressions count. So, are you proud of your fantastic profile because it is client ready and written with them in mind? Or do you look at it and wonder how you could do better because you are not generating leads? My Marketing Guy works with those who want to take advantage of the amazing potential offered by LinkedIn. So, for more details, please email guy at mymarketingguy.co.uk to arrange an initial consultation. Remember, your next client is on LinkedIn. Very much. We, we, the, the funky strategy has been very much on working smart, not harder. Mm. Because that's sort of the trap we've fallen into mm. um and it's been a really useful exercise sort of revisiting what we do why we do what we charge how we come to those prices the processes for acquiring work the processes for securing the work and then the processes for actually doing the work and at, ironically and we've we've done an episode on this the processes for making sure that we get the reviews for the work that we do and promoting and advocating the work that we do to then swing it right back to the very beginning which is where do you get your work from um, and it's been a very cathartic process going through all of that and it's still an ongoing thing we haven't finished that process yet we're, there's still lots of those things that we're still nailing down but it's it's been a really useful exercise and as I've, I've alluded to previously it meant we reviewed the prices um, we've reviewed the industries that we're going after. Yeah. We've upgraded a lot of the processes that we use to do the work and to... The systems, yeah. The systems to hopefully better, give a better experience for the clients. Yeah. And hopefully these things will all add to the, the unique selling point that, that you can offer. And that's come out of a review, albeit not sitting down and looking at a business plan, but having a review and thinking about the elements that are in your business You bought plan. a notebook. <laughs> there was a notebook purchased and a pen as well. I hasten to add for tax purposes, both of those are going through the books. <laughs> <laughs> and there was scribbling, there was ink and a paper used. By you, by the way, because I'm, I'm all electronic. <laughs> uh, but th we have done that process, haven't we? Yeah. I mean, probably it's probably a good time to just say that I am working with the Funky Vibes team now, if that doesn't make, <laughs> if that totally, came yes. out of left field. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I am still doing my interiors business, but I'm helping Mark out a little bit too. But it's the corporate background that you've added that sort of more, that 
more what's the word I'm looking the for? Note- notebook and Structured, pen. organized, <laughs> a professional. Okay, fair please. I mean I, I I'm all of these things, but time. Um, there'll be a lot of, I suppose, sole traders. Uh, uh, perhaps this is the question throughout to, to throw out to you two guys. Um, part of the reason why I haven't had as much chance as a business owner to do that was because I was on my own running a business. And actually, with bringing Ish on board, there's now two people doing that same amount of work. And yes. lo and behold, you can get through it a bit better but not everyone will be in that boat I guess. you'll have more thinking time won't you that's the point i think the, the thinking time and the bouncing ideas off each other has been useful yeah. so how do you do that if you don't have an ish if there isn't a second person to help alleviate that load chris panic <laughs> uh, press the panic alarm no. <laughs> just throw the towel Phone in no, we, yeah, we, throw, we, throw the towel in we, give we, up. we'll edit that out <laughs> no uh, I mean networking over the years networking has been a very valuable uh, area for me uh, to go to a networking uh, do and to be able to discuss uh, things that are of common interest really you, you may have hit a uh, hit a bit of a buffer that uh, that other people have hit before and been through, and they'll talk you through it. They'll they'll help you out. Um, you know the accountants there to to give you a hand, the solicitor, the uh, sounds as though I've been in financial legal problems, doesn't it? Um, but uh, but there there will be a. But it's not. Group. I suppose that we should hasten to add that you you you're a wily old fox. You've got a big network, and so you yeah. have the ability to tap into yes. these expertise yes. more regularly than perhaps other people do. And the way they can build up their network is by following this sort of advice. Yes, yes, is is by by getting together with with a group of like minded people just to bounce ideas off one another, um, because you can't. Um, uh, no man is an island comes to mind, uh, Mark. Particularly if there's chum in the water. Mm. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go with this but, sea thing. Or woman, God. for that matter. <laughs> well, they're smart enough not to be in the chummy waters to begin with. Absolutely. <laughs> what about you, Ish? What would your solution be if you're left floundering on your own? I think networking spot on, to be honest. Or phone a friend that understands a little bit about business. Or even, I would probably, if I didn't have any of those, probably speak to an ex-colleague that knew how I worked and maybe could spar with me. Those were the options that I would do. Um, but I mean, like I've had the opportunity to work with One Manchester, to work with People Plus, Women's Organisation. There are so many organisations out there that if you find a people advisor or a, a business mentor that can do that that function as well, if none of the above works. Yeah, I think I've been really lucky with my support network from a business perspective. I mean, my dad had a really successful business uh, which he built with his brother. Yep. And so being able to tap into it, because the economies of scale that he was dealing with are much different to the ones I have, but the problems, ironically, are exactly the yes. same. Yeah. Um, and and so it's been it's brilliant to be able to tap into that sort of expertise. And I'd be very lucky in being able to do that and say, bloody hell, how do you solve the staff? What a headache. And he's like, listen, yeah. don't get any easier. Just put them in a back room and shoot them. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, follow the processes, people. Mm-hmm. But it, it it's not, it's reassuring to know that those same problems exist wherever you sit on the business scale. Well, your dad could probably do that in the old days. What he? shoot them? Yeah, they probably could in the in the. He's 70s not that old, bloody hell. <laughs> He's going long enough where there's enough room in that car park for the bodies. Mm, dear. <laughs> It's all right, Dad. I've got you covered. <laughs> These are all jokes, yeah. everybody. Yes, they indeed. might not sound like it, but um, and people might not be laughing. Well, this time certainly isn't. But uh... <laughs> not with the HR head on. No, definitely not. But yeah, absolutely. So tap into those. Ex- Speak to someone who's been there before. Um, what else have we got to cover on business plans? I, I think we we relatively covered. It. I mean, definitely listen to the previous episode because there's a lot of crossover, and this is why we chose these two topics. Uh, to go first because one very much leads into the other um a lot of the tips that we and the issues we discussed in that one are relevant for this this episode as well yeah and vice versa one of the one of the things that uh, we we touch on constantly and did have done for the last three years and it 
should be in the business plan even more so now is who's your target market because that target market might have changed Absolutely over the last six right. months. Absolutely right. So if it has changed, check it. Uh, let's let's establish exactly who it is, where you can find it, and that is the base camp for me. How do people check it, Chris? Well, who's placing business with them? Mm. Um, who's who's not placing business with them now that was before? You know, that's that's a measure of how it might have changed. Um, why aren't the, why are those people not placing the business now? Have they gone elsewhere? If so, why have they just stopped? either buying your product or service. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's lots of questions you've got to ask yourself when, uh, when it comes down to researching your, your precise target market and how and if it's changed. And it's not a scary thing no. to change direction, is it, Mark? No. I've done that plenty of times. Pivoting. Pivoting. Oh, we I haven't mean, said I changed, that word in a lot. I changed, I changed careers. I know, but it's like when you've established a customer base and now you're having to change that customer base. No, it can that, be quite I, scary sometimes, I, uh, can't it? Very, yeah. Probably one of the main reasons why I decided to knock the legal world on the head was because they were making it more competitive and so you're going to have to work harder to get work and you were being forced to charge less for that work. So it was work harder for less money. And that as a lifestyle didn't appeal to me, mm. um, particularly as I didn't particularly enjoy the work it anymore. It wasn't it wasn't the same job that I initially set out to do, and so as a as a yeah. as a result of which, when I did that analysis, my my decision was very much, do you know what, move on, yeah. um, and then it was very much a case of well, what do we do instead? Well, I already knew what I loved. I didn't. I, I did take a bit of time to decide what it was I wanted to do. But um, you know, at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with doing that. No, of course not. A lot, a lot and you don't know what do opportunities it. are going to be presenting themselves if once you do that pivot. Well, I now do jobs. I've now got multiple businesses doing jobs that are brilliantly f- great fun. It's it, it couldn't be any further from what no. I do every day. I love what I do for a living now. And so it was well worth doing it, albeit it was perhaps slightly scary at the time. Yeah. But it was I wouldn't regret a second of it. So are we saying that it's a good decision then to just take a step back at this point, given where we are with in the world and assess all the things that we've talked about and maybe review that business plan? Are we saying it's a good opportunity to do that? Would you recommend it? If you haven't got one, do one. Yeah, if I you've mean, done uh, one, revise it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now now's the best time to do it. Yeah. Because, even if you're doing well yeah even if you're doing well we, i mentioned this with my outrageous shark in the water analogy it's the even if you're doing well can you be doing better Absolutely. and some people go well i'm happy with me lot as it is but you might hit hard times as 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 wonderful as the sun is shining now for your profession and yeah. trade yeah. it could do a complete 180 because i'm sure um the service industry wasn't expecting the pandemic and then it hit and their entire business the the travel industry is probably a great one uh the travel industry was gung-ho everyone was buying holidays everything was wonderful pandemic hit they couldn't do any business now they can do business everyone's desperate to go on holiday again but they've got no staff because all the staff moved on so they still can't make back what they were hoping to make back no um, that and I think, your business. I, I think the, the the trades need to be need to be wary about what's what's coming up as well because they hit a real golden time during the pandemic when people uh, people were spending money on their houses rather than going on holiday because they couldn't um, due to be, due to lockdown. So the trades made hay. It will um, slow down. Yeah, that either. will slow down without question. Oh, absolutely. The property market usually does 10-year cycles when it hits yeah. a bump, yeah. and it's around about that period now. I was also speaking to someone in the uh, property and financial sector, and they were saying that some of the mortgage companies are looking at revising how they assess um, giving mortgages because it was always stress test based on um, your outgoings and your incomings, yeah, yeah. whereas they're umming and ahhing about going back to one of the more traditional methods which obviously led to the 2008-2010 financial crash yep. 
Um, so it, it could be possible, and that crash massively affected anyone in the property, which was yeah. trades. Yeah. Um, so these things can come round. So make hay while the sun shines. Yep. Make your fortune. If you can make your fortune in 12 months instead yeah, right. of over 10 years just by honing in on your business, do it. Mm. Get in, get out. It's not your problem anymore, then, is it? Oh. You can go and sit in your island. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, guys, have we got any tools or tips to give? I mean, for this, I'd definitely, if you've got your accounting processes like zero or. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's the other one that people Quickbook. T- Sage. Um, then use those to do your financial forecasting. Mm-hmm. If you've got your case management co- um, software, you, your client relations software, whatever you want to call it, go back and review that. That'll help you assess where your work comes from, what jobs they've purchased. Um, so you can probably do a bit more of an analysis. Anyone got any other tools? If you don't have a business plan, Google it because there's 20 million versions that you can just download and Loads just do, templates. A, do yep. a, get a template. Absolutely. So it's not a hard thing to get a hold of. Fantastic. Well, what's the topic we're covering next? To be confirmed. I'm keeping it a secret. She does this, doesn't she? She does. I might pop it into socials at some point in the next couple of weeks, but yeah. Okay, so watch this space to be confirmed for our next topic. Yeah. That's, that's not very good. We're only two episodes in. We've already fallen off the bandwagon, No, Chris. but I mean, that also gives us, our listeners an opportunity to let us know if there's anything that's current that they want us to cover. So get in touch with us if you want us to speak about a particular topic. How can they do that? Um, via socials or by sending us an email to... Oh, can you not remember it? <laughs> no. Gofish at thepodstation.co.uk. Contact us via the website. That's gofishpodcast.com. Or check us out on the social medias. That's at Gofish Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Dead easy. Perfect. And that's what we have you here for, <laughs> to remember all these things. And you're so good at it. Absolutely. Yes, quite. Well, I wasn't at the beginning of this episode. <laughs> You've redeemed yourself. Well done. Yep. Uh, guys, thank you very much as always. Pleasure. Thank you very much for listening. And we'll catch you next time. See you later, guys. Bye. Get social at GoFish Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.